Hey, in this video, we're going to review Akamai Technologies. This is a cloud delivery network and cybersecurity company founded in 1998. So what we'll do is we'll do a forum analysis. We'll start with the margin of safety, which Ticker does for us, and then we'll move over to the meaning, then the moat, then the management. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, when you log into Ticker, you can see in the top right, this stock is on sale. It has a score of 16 out of 20, which is really good. Shows really strong financials, and we'll take a closer look at those in a second. And a margin of safety of 80%. And just to summarize here, margin of safety is the, um, it's a share price discount off the sticker price. You can see here the share price is about 119 today. And the sticker price or fair value is 600. So that's a, you definitely have some strong upside potential. As I mentioned in previous videos, if you want to take a look at the math on how we arrive at those numbers, you can certainly go to ticker.com. There's an education section and you can take a look at, uh, you, you'll see a little tab that says calculations right there. And you can certainly take this and, and go do your own um, analysis within Excel. So, Let's take a closer look at the financials. We'll go over to that tab right here. And what Ticker does is it looks at the fundamentals, which includes the income statement, cash flow statement, and balance sheet. And what we like to see is on the income statement is nice, consistent increase on the revenue, which we can see right here, which is a great sign. It's like picture perfect. Um, you jump over to the income, nice profit over the years, a uh, little dip back in 2018, but looks like that has significantly increased over the last few years. And then you have your earnings per share, with, which also relates to profit. Jump down to your cash flow statements. Again, we like to see a nice consistent increase. We, we definitely can see that. Um, the most recent year is looking really positive, a nice jump with free cash flow. Um, that's a lot of cash you can use for, I always think of like uh, marketing or uh, R&D, research and development. And let's drop down to the balance sheet. So we like to see the assets and equity increasing. So let's just go back a little bit. Same thing, nice consistent increase on the assets and the equity. Um, pretty much the same thing. That's great. With liabilities and debt, we like to see those numbers going down or flattening out. If they do increase, that is okay. It's typically the biggest liabilities in the business, as I probably mentioned in other videos. You have employees, you have payroll, or you have office space. Um, in manufacturing companies, you'll probably have uh, investment in um, large equipment. So we can see the last three years, this is good. We have a, a nice level stage you can look you go back a few years and it looks like we did increase quite a bit my guess is this is a tech business we um we probably hired a lot of people um, between looks like 2019 and 2020 and then we have debt so with debt we like to see these numbers decrease if they are increasing this tells us that um, they're probably going to a bank taking out loans just to cover payroll and um if there's other expenses they need right away. My guess is it's probably payroll. But overall, this is looking really good from my financial standpoint. So you have the revenue, net income, and EPS, I don't think could be looking any better. This is excellent. And that's another reason why that margin of safety is so high for this business. So let's transition over to the business model. We'll talk about the meaning a little bit. Um, Within this article I wrote this week, I just want to give a quick uh, little history of the business. This is kind of fascinating. So the CEO, Tom Layton, Dr. Tom Layton, he started working with an algorithm in 1995-96, a few years before the company was founded. And this algorithm helps um, replicate content over the network. And the purpose of this is they're thinking ahead. This is a pre-dot-com bubble, is as internet businesses grow, um, you want to make sure that people across the globe have a very similar experience to the website loading speeds. So, for example, if you, you have a business in the States, you launch that tech business and now you have customers in, let's say, um, Europe, Indonesia, uh, wherever, um, you want to make sure they have a very similar experience. So it's going to spread that content out and, and help it run more efficiently across the globe. This was a new tech around that time. 
Um, they actually entered a competition at uh, MIT where Dr. Layton was working. And um, I don't think they won, but they did pretty well. And this, this got them thinking about uh, creating a business around this idea. Um, now, this is something really interesting. For those of you who are interested in IPO stocks, this is a good lesson right here. This is a pretty extreme uh, situation, but check this out. They went public in 1999. This was a year after they were founded. Um, just because you can go public doesn't mean you should. You want to make sure that if you have a business, you want to build up a few years of nice, consistent increasing of revenue, net income, EPS, um, and have a strong balance sheet at the same time. You don't want to go public right away because if you have a bad financial statement, your stock can tank just like this. Check this out. So in 1999, they went public at $145. Within four months, the stock went up to $327. Um, actually, it was within two months. It went up to $327. And then four months later, it went down to $65. What that tells us is one of those first financial statements revealed the truth. The financials were awful at the time, which is understandable. A newer business is not going to have a strong income statement, balance sheet, or um, cash flow statement like, like a more mature business. So the share price went down to 65 and then another four months later, it went down to $4. That's a 98% loss. It's terrible. <laughs> so in this case, it has still taken 20 years because the share price is 119, 20 years, and it still hasn't hit that high again. But if you take a close look at the chart, which we can do right now, we'll go to show all. And you can see it's a pretty consistent increase, a few bumps over time. But since 2011, um, a nice steady incline over time. Like you can see here, we'll go back. It was like 21 went to 75, it kind of pulled back in 2017, 2018, and then it's just been consistent thereafter. You can see it changed the on sale that looks like June 29th of 2020. And the stock has just been doing really well. It's also done really well in the last few months um, where a lot of tech stocks were beat up pretty bad from um, you had, you know, there's Russia and Ukraine. There's also the rising inflation rates. And then of course the um, interest rates to come. Um, it's, it's actually done pretty well through this, um, this period of time, which is great. But let's dive into the business model just a little bit. So they're really known for their CDN, which is the content delivery network. That's what I talked about is they can deliver content around the globe much faster. They also focus on cybersecurity. I, I love cybersecurity because a lot of businesses operate with tech. And if you do not renew your cybersecurity licenses, you can be in big trouble. Um, and cybersecurity comes at a premium. Like example, I invest in a company called Fortinet as we speak. And contracts for cybersecurity licenses at big companies can be hundreds of thousands of dollars and up to millions of dollars per year. Um, and of course, like I said, it's sticky. You can't like say, hey, we don't want to protect our company and not pay that. You have to pay it. So it makes it a great business model. They also have what's called edge computing, which kind of relates to the CDN. Um, I'm kind of oversimplifying this, but allows content in different parts of the globe to be distributed faster. So again, people across the globe will experience your software applications and your platforms or website um, just as well as anybody else around the globe. Of course, internet speeds at each location can vary, but um, these are really important tools with the business model. Um, I just want to list out a few customers they serve today. So um, on the broadcast media side, they serve uh, Fox, iHeartMedia, Hotstar, public sector. They serve the U.S. Department of Defense, um, dot com, M uh, looks like MCNC. They also serve publications like the Washington Post, Smart News. Um, so definitely some big players here. Um, they also serve a few other industries like uh, finance, gaming, e-commerce, healthcare, and hospitality. I want to touch on the news real quick because there, there are a few little details to highlight. And the first one is they recently acquired 
uh, Linode, which is a it's a hosting platform similar to AWS, Amazon, and Azure, which is owned by Microsoft. And this is my guess is this was a, a, a nice channel partner for them. So they um, they would use Akamai to provide their security services to their customers. And in this case, it probably just it made perfect sense. Like, hey, what if we just buy you guys because they're they're a good mold. So you got hosting on one side, then you got cybersecurity and putting the two together is really a good fit. So it looks like they bought the company for nine hundred million. I'm sure some of the cash flow, that free cash flow we touched on earlier, that will go towards that. Um, but they definitely have some cash available to apply towards it. Um, that was a big win. Um, there are a few other articles here that talked about the increasing or consistently increasing um, EPS. The EPS is the most important metric of any business model. Um, so with the EPS, as I was mentioning, you definitely want to see that increasing year over year, quarter over quarter. That's what really moves the needle of the share price. What large institutions are looking for is they want to see like an expectation. You, you could, I'll just use a random number of like one dollar, and let's say your EPS comes in, in at a buck twenty, um, and then you set expectations again, and it keeps exceeding. That's what causes that share price to continuously go up. So that's one thing to pay attention to is every quarter when those statements come out is um, you want to see those beat expectations. So in this case, they're just pretty much echoing Akamai is doing exactly that. They're certainly a lot stronger than they were 20 years ago when they went public. Um, a much more mature business, a much stronger income statement, cash flow statement and balance sheets. But really the business model I like a lot. Again, I like cybersecurity. It's not going to go away the next 10 years. In this space we live in, every large company has a significant amount of tech Everybody is a computer and you need to protect, uh, you have to have security there. So the cybersecurity and the content delivery network, it's a great one-two punch with this business model. And they're, they're definitely going to be around a while. I'd like to touch on the competition next. So there are a lot of competitors in the cybersecurity space. We're not going to really focus on that. We want to focus on the CDN, the content delivery network. So I, I did look up a few others and we can get a good comparison of what we're looking at. So just to set the baseline here with, with Akamai, they are on sale. They have a 16 out of 20 and a margin of safety of 80%. Cloudflare is definitely another CDN. Um, you can see here they have a score of 6 out of 20, margin of safety of 1%. They are overpriced. That is not a stock I'd invest in. Full transparency at Ticker, we actually host with Hetzner and our CDN is Cloudflare. They are a great product, but it is a young business. Would I invest in Cloudflare right now? Probably not. Um, let's keep going. We have Zscaler. You can see here they are overpriced, score of 8 out of 20 and margin of safety of 1. So in this case, Akamai is still beating the competition. And then we jump to the big players. So we have Amazon, we have Google, and we have Microsoft. Each of these companies has a hosting platform. You have AWS, you have um, Google Cloud, and then you have Azure. They all have their own CDN. So if you're hosting with any of these platforms, there's a high probability you will use their CDN. There are some companies that um, they like to keep that separate. But all of these companies are really well rated in tickers. So you have on sale with Amazon, 14 out of 20, margin of safety of 80%. Google um, on sale, 19 out of 20, 80% MOS. And Microsoft on sale with a 19 out of 20 and MOS of 80%. So uh, of the three, uh, Google and Microsoft are the strongest players. They're, they're big. I actually hold those two companies in my own portfolio. So overall, the, the competitive uh, landscape with Akamai is, is looking pretty good. It does beat a few competitors, but it's the big players that I mentioned are the threat. I believe with the way the internet is growing and how many businesses are really are, they're online businesses, essentially, there's some kind of software element. Um, I don't see this as a big threat to Akamai. I think a lot of people can win at the same time. So let's jump down to the, the last M. We'll look at the management. So just a quick summary, Dr. Tom Layton, he got a PhD in applied math from MIT in 1981. And he's, he's been a big proponent of education, especially STEM. 
And when I look through his history, he doesn't have a lot of history working for other businesses. I like to find CEOs or leaders who they they have a lot of past business experience growing growing other businesses. Um, they, it's not always needed, but it is a nice thing to see. In this case, he's been with the company since the beginning. He he rode out that difficult storm with his leadership team when that share price went from three hundred dollars. Uh, something like that down to four. That's, I mean, talk about a stomach ache and pressure from your shareholders at that time. Well, they had the resilience to withstand that period of time, which is awesome. They also are really good from my experience, uh, really strong with customer service and just focusing on long-term relationships. Any enterprise type business um, or any B2B business should be there. You don't want to just pick up a customer and then move on to the next. It's like you have to continuously serve them provide value, and really stay with that customer for the long term. It sounds like they're doing a good job of that. Another thing to point out with Layden is I looked up a few videos on YouTube, and he's the type of guy that'll jump on podcasts with college students. He he takes time out of his day to just talk to students and, and really um, encourage students to get involved with STEM, um, or pretty much uh, you know uh, tech jobs, if you will. That says a lot, like there's a lot of CEOs that probably wouldn't do that, take time out of their day to meet with college students. So I think that's pretty cool. I looked up the Glassdoor rating, they have a 4.5 out of five, which is pretty good. Um, and it sounds like a lot of people do like working there. So I think he is the right fit for CEO. Um, and I think he's gonna be there for a little while longer. So overall, you know, if we do a quick summary here of the four M's, we've got the margin of safety is the first M. The financials look outstanding in Tinker. You get a 16 out of 20 and an 80% MOS, so solid upside potential. The meaning, I really like that. You have cybersecurity um, and the CDN, which is going to be around for a while. The moat is the, is the threat. Like I mentioned, you have Amazon, Google, and Microsoft um, are the big threats, but the other independent players... Akamai definitely has them beat. And then the management, as I said, I think uh, Tom is doing a great, great job there. So, so overall, if you're looking for a tech stock to kind of um, think outside the box, something that's not so glamorous and not so flashy, um, there's a lot of tech stocks that can be labeled main stocks. This is definitely not that. This is a, a pretty stable business that will be around for a while. So um, I love to hear what you guys think. Thanks. Thank you.